Hi, this is Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Today I'm going to zero my RDB with a Weaver 1x3 optic mounted. Now, uh, this is actually an optic I had on the uh, Marlin guide gun, and I have excess sights coming on the way for that. And I thought, well, I should try this on the RDB, try a, a conventional optic on it rather than the red dot. And this is a 1, 2, 3 power, so kind of a, a very low LPVO. And uh, some of the key things I want to go over is one is how to, to mount the scope. Uh, one of the key things is to get the proper positioning so that you have the right eye relief. And then the other is uh, the height of the scope and finding the rings that position it at the right height they are pretty important. Otherwise, you're going to have to potentially add some padding uh, to elevate your cheek weld. Uh, I did manage to find scopes that put this in the right position. A lot of uh, this, if you remember in previous videos, I did try to run the ACOG on this with the conventional mount on it, and it was about a quarter of an inch too high. And so I put that back on my AR, and that's when I went, and went to doing the red dot thing. Uh, this is about a quarter of an inch lower. Uh, the center of the optic is about a quarter of an inch lower with these rings uh, than the ACOG. So it's just about perfect. Um, key thing for eye relief is one is when you do the turkey neck cheek weld and you extend your neck all the way forward that you have a full field of view through your optic. But yet you want the other end of the eye box to, to allow you to shift back to a more uh, an aggressive, I guess, attack position and still see a full field of view in this optic. And this one is has a pretty wide-ranging uh, eye box on it, and so it allows me to do that. In fact, it feels a whole lot like a scout scope. It almost feels like I can, uh, especially with it at one power, I can keep both eyes open, and I'm actually, my brain's combining both images when at one power, so I combine the image I see in the optic with the left eye, or the uh, un, un optic eye, and uh, that works really well. Now when I bump it up to three power, I can then cha do the whole change from the outside eye to the inside eye and back and forth. And um, so you can do some of the bend and aiming concept uh, that way. Um, now one reason uh, a lot of people ask why is why is my optics always mounted so far forward and that is for that turkey neck cheek weld and there's a couple reasons for doing the turkey neck cheek weld one is that's a consistent repeatable position that you're all the way extended forward as far as you can basically and uh, so it's repeatable and consistency is key for marksmanship now, uh, the other thing is, and it doesn't matter on a rifle like this, this is a, a very mild recoiling rifle, but if I were shooting, say, my uh, uh, Marlin guide gun in 4570, doing the full turkey neck cheek well where my, my neck is extended as far forward as I can, when the rifle recoils, the rifle is not going to recoil under me, and then I get the scope bite, you know, where you get pounded in the eye with your optic. So what happens, you'll see a lot of people with their optics mounted way back and they take this relaxed position kind of uh, back on the rifle and then when it recoils, that bring, that allows that scope to come up and tap you, you know, pretty, pretty uh, aggressively in the eye. Now if you're doing the turkey neck cheek weld, you're going to, you're basically, your head can only do one thing, it can only go back with the recoil, it can't, it can't like slide forward and have the rifle come under it and catch that you know get that uh, scope bite now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to this rifle well this optic has a a duplex reticle I'm going to zero today at 25 yards and since this has a 20 inch barrel that should put me on at again for the secondary zero at 300 yards uh, in between that uh, say at about 150 to 200 yards I'll have to hold down about five inches so let's compare battle sight zero at 25 meters versus the standard, say, hunter, uh, typical 100 yard zero. Let's have a look at some trajectory information here using the 556 62 grain cartridge. If we zero, we'll look at the red line here. If we zero at 
100 yards, what we're actually doing is we're zeroing um, bring, where you see where the trajectory of the red line comes up to meet the line of sight there at zero and that bringing back so that the point of impact meets the point of aim at 100 yards. What we're actually doing is we're actually creating where the near zero is going to be about 87 yards and the and the far zero will be the 100 yards. The actual apogee will be at about 93 yards. Now if we zero at 25 yards, that's where the the bullet comes up to meet the the line of sight at 25 yards for the near zero and then if you do that on a 556 cartridge 62 grain bullet the far zero will be at 325 yards this is approximately this is based on a, a I believe a 20 inch barrel if you have a shorter barrel length or maybe 55 grain ammo it's probably going to be somewhere between 275 and 300 yards for your far zero and then our apogee will be at about 180 yards and it will be about about 5.8 inches high at 180 yards now the reason we do this battle site zero is because with that zero you can sh hit a man-sized target anywhere from zero to about 400 yards without having to really change your hold. Now if you wanted to be extra little extra accurate, if you're shooting at uh, your target at 200 yards away, you would hold low about 5.8 inches. And if you, your target is 400 yards away, you're going to raise your point of aim about 8 inches. Now this compares to the 100 yard zero, the red line, if at 400 yards we're 25 inches low. And that's because while the, the advantage of the 100 yard zero is out from zero to about 150, 175 yards, it's pretty much, you're pretty much dead on for most uh, large game, deer, antelope, that kind of thing. It's good enough out to about 200 yards. Whereas the battle site zero is good enough for man sized targets out to about 400 yards. So it's just different different uses or different zeros for depending on your usage. I think the battle site zero is more uh, more flexible. It kind of just flattens things out a little bit overall on average. Yes, if you're shooting at something 200 yards away, you're gonna have to hold down a little bit, hold down about six inches at 200 yards, and then hold up about eight inches at 400 yards. Let's look at some of the, let's compare if your, what your optic, let's say we're using a duplex reticle and we're using the D target, the silhouettes. And uh, in this case we're using the uh, duplex reticle and we've zeroed this optic at 25 yards. So it will be on again at about 300 yards for a 5.56 cartridge. So if we're shooting at 25 yards or 300 yards, we just shoot dead on. Okay, let's look what it, how it looks if you're using an ACOG. We'll overlay that on top of the duplex reticle. And you can see that if you're shooting at 25 yards or 300 yards, we put the top of that center post on the point where you want the point of impact to be. It's also the base of the chevron and the top of that center post. That's your point of aim for 25 and 300 yards. Now if you're shooting 100 yards or even 200 yards with the duplex reticle you have to hold down. You have to hold lower than what you want the point of impact to be. So if you look back here on our chart at 100 yards we're 4.2 inches high and at 200 yards we're 5.7 inches high so let's you know between four and seven uh, between four and about six inches high at that range and as you can see here we're holding at about probably five inches low to make our point of impact be right there on the V 
Now let's look at the the ACOG which has its bullet drop compensator radical and in this case if we want to shoot 100 yards here was our 50 and 300 yards zero but to hit something at 100 yards we use the tip of the chevron the very top of it and it's often thought of as this as being the main focus of your aiming effort I think it's often better to think of this as being your your 300 yard zero being your main focus but if you're shooting 100 yards you know close fairly close range then you will uh, use the tip of the chevron if we move on to 400 yards remember with the 25 and 300 yard zero we have to hold uh, at 400 yards we are about 8 inches low so we have to hold up about 8 inches and so with our duplex reticle that's where we're, we just create an aiming point about 8 inches above where we want the point of impact to be now of course the advantage of the bullet drop compensating reticle is that at 400 yards we use the stadia line for 400 yards and aim dead on we see that our 25 and 300 yard zero here on, on the ACOG reticle is right over top of the same place as where our duplex reticle is and our 100 yard bullet drop compensating reticle point here at the top of the chevron is well above uh, the top of the head of the target now one thing I highly recommend is to uh, go through the Project Appleseed program and uh, first you go in and you'll learn and get your your rifleman's patch which you'll do at uh, typically at 25 yards and you'll shoot for the simulated targets of 100 200 300 400 yards uh, then once you've gotten your rifleman patch then you can go tend a project Appleseed known distance event and it's worth it <laughs> I mean besides earning your long-range patch uh, the known distance event uh, you'll get one of these great little references that uh, goes into a lot of detail about shooting long range with a rifle and covers the things like a lot of things that you know people think oh I need to account for the angle and all that it once you if you calculate it out unless you're, you're like shooting 2,000 yards or something you're not going to need to account for that it's what you'll teach you is what's good enough to be a marksman out to five or maybe even 600 yards and longer but um, you, you know people overestimate I've got to factor in all these things when you can actually get good enough on it uh, they talk about for example in this uh, in this guide here it talks about shooting at angles and really uh, unless you're you know even if you're shooting at a 45 degree angle what are you shooting at something at 3,000 if you're shooting a thousand yards at what is it you're shooting at something several thousand feet up in the air and eh, it's not likely I mean even here in Wyoming you may get uh, you know 15 degree angles and it's really irrelevant so let's get started let's get a few rounds down range see where the optic is and then we'll make some adjustments and uh, and then check our zero Okay, so I was shooting for the V, and here's my group right there. I think this was my first shot, my cold barrel shot, so I'm not going to count that. I'm going to factor in that that's my center, my four round group right here. I'm going to count that as my cold barrel flyer. And that is three and a half inches, or three inches to the right and two inches low. So now, so we know we're three inches to the right, I need to move it to the left three inches and move it up two inches. So let's go back to the scope and we'll make our adjustments. Okay, if you remember, we were three inches right and two inches low. So I need to move the point of impact to the left three inches. Now each inch at 25 yards is four minute of angle. So, so for three inches, that means there's 12 minute of angle to the left and eight minute of angle up. 
Okay, now our, the clicks that we have on this particular optic are each, it's a quarter minute of angle per click. So in order to move this optic 12 minute of angle to the left, I'm going to have to do 48 clicks left. So there's 48 clicks moving the bullet of impact to the left. And then we need to go eight minute of angle up. So with each, that's uh, four times eight is 32. So we've got to come up 32 clicks. And there's 32 clicks up. Now we'll fire again, and we'll see if we're a little closer. Okay, here's our, our follow-up group there. Uh, this last one, I didn't do my breathing rise, my last shot, and I'm pretty sure that was that's why that's high. So I'm going to just use these four rounds here, and it looks like um, probably half an inch to the left, and uh, maybe a half an inch high. So I need to move it back to the right. That's a half an inch at this range is uh, two minutes of angle and uh, I need to move it down two minutes of angle. So remember that uh, on this particular optic it's one quarter click per minute of angle. I think maybe it's actually turned out to be a little more than that. Maybe not quite half minute of angle but maybe three-eighths minute of angle. But anyway I need to do uh, to get it down a half, uh, two minutes of angle I've got to come uh, down eight clicks or to get it down, yeah, down two minutes of angle, get it over, down eight clicks, and to move it over to the right, uh, a half, two minute of angle, uh, eight clicks as well. So let's go set that up, and then we'll fire for this one. clicks to get two minute of angle. And then to the right, eight clicks. Okay, so here's our hits. One, two, three. The flyer there again. I uh, had I was working the reset and pulled it just a little bit, not too awful much. Still need to work my breathing a little bit and get used to all this bulk from wearing cold weather gear. But uh, I'm gonna call that for now zeroed and actually start working a little bit more on my marksman shift with my cold weather gear. So I'm gonna mark these and I'm gonna do a little kind of an abbreviated AQT today with the rounds I have left 
and uh, actually I think what I'm going to do first, I'm going to grab some 55 grain. This was all shot with the 75 grain uh, hollow point boat tail and I'm going to grab some 55 grain and I'm going to fire another group and let's see how far it off it, how far the 55 grain is off from the 75 grain zero. Okay, we've got some 55 grain. Let's see how that does. Let's see how I do with this. All right, here is our 55 grain shots. Now, we were zeroed with the 75 grain, so we can say that it is, one, two, three, uh, so these are half inch squares, so there's one, two, about two inches high at 25 yards. That is uh, eight minute of angle high. And that's been consistent with my previous testing, uh, I'll include a link to another video where I tested uh, ammo uh, shooting this rifle with and without the flash hider. And I found that shooting without the flash hider, uh, the, the differences between 55 grain, 62 grain, and 75 grain, or the difference in the zero at 25 yards, was not very significant. But with the flash hider, we do see this eight minute of angle difference between the, the bullet weights. So we're still getting that issue. So I'm going to probably stick with the 75 grain. That should work out better for us. Uh, it's not going to probably make a difference at this range, although maybe that group might say it does, but uh, at uh, longer distances where that uh, boat tail and the little extra weight, I think it'll help us get us out to 300 yards a lot better. So anyway, let's go back and we'll do a, kind of an abbreviated AQT with what I have left, uh, I've got some, I'm going to use the 55 grain, we'll shoot uh, for offhand, and then I'll switch to the 75 grain for the prone. So this is the AQ AQT offhand, I'm just going to do five rounds, and I'm going to set it at uh, 1x, mag non-magnified. Okay, so for my offhand AQT, I had uh, three fives and two threes. So that's uh, 15 plus six is uh, 21. And then since I'm only shooting half the shots to save ammo, this is normally a 10 round course of fire. I'll double that, so 21 times two. So I got a 42, which is about what I uh, usually get about a 44, 45. But it is freaking freezing cold, snowy, and it's awkward shooting with the coat. But uh, and then I'm, I'm have I am having to hold down here to hit up there because of the 55 gram ammo. Uh, we'll switch to stage two. I'll continue with the 55 gram on stage two, and I think I've got enough of the 75 gram to shoot stage three and four. Um, with the set with that with the, the ammo that I'm zeroed for. Okay, this is uh, stage two of the AQT. Again, I'm going to shoot five rounds. We'll double it to get the score. And uh, I'm going to shoot squatting rice paddy prone, which is uh, not actually allowed in Project Appleseed, uh, but it's uh, just with all the bulky clothes on today, it's going to be hard to get into. Uh, a seated or even kneeling position and I don't want to get down in this muck so 
I'm going to do squatting. I really ought to be able to give myself uh, whatever score I get, I ought to multiply it by the Joe Biden factor, multiply it by 1.2, and then get my score from that. But okay, we'll, we'll be honest and just score it straight up. So, five round squatting. Go use a little, a little bit of magnification this time. Maybe a little more. Let's go to two. Oh, I gotta remember to shoot two inches under where I want to hit. five shots all right so stage two scoring I just used all the same target it's too freaking cold to be shifting targets today I did notice my uh, this flyer here and I thought oh shit I'm shooting a little bit high still so I pulled down lower so you can see I had two shots there well I thought everything was going good but they were just barely getting in the black then I saw that shot thought damn it I need to go down lower so I pulled lower and got two solid fives there. So, uh, so I got two fives. Uh, that's a five because it's just touching the that barrier there. So that's three fives plus a four. So 15 plus four is 19 plus three is 22. So I got a 44. Not bad. All right, this is stage three. This is a uh, rapid fire prone. I think I got six rounds in there, so I'll count out five. So let's dump the 55 green. Vigorously eject, chambered round. Five green. Now it's got to remember to shoot four point of impact here. Don't have to do any eight minute of angle hold. Go boost the power, go to three power. All right, this turn, this is really nice here. Let's see. One, two, three, four fives and a four. Pretty damn sweet. So that's uh, 24 times two, so that's a 48 for this stage. Damn, that's, I'm pretty happy with that for suffering this cold weather. Wish I had more ammo so I could shoot the full stage and do this right, but. So let's move to stage, uh, fourth stage. I was shooting for kind of the bottom there, this edge. And so I'll have to remember to do that when I get to stage four for sure, because those targets are even smaller. Okay, stage four. Uh, again, five rounds. And I have a round of chamber. So I have topped this off, or not topped this off, I've put four rounds in this. Get real serious, take off the hat. Ugh. Make sure we're at max mag. Yep, max magnification. Three power on this scoop. Natural point of aim.
All right, so I just did five shots on stage four. Started off, I put two on this one, and then I decided I was gonna put uh, just one on each target. And I just, whatever target, I got my natural point of eight at quickest. Uh, that's the target I used, so I went to this one. And then I, when I did my shift, natural point of aim shift, I ended up that this was a good one, and then this one. So I ended up with, uh, there's a, a 10 on that one, a four on that one, a four on that one, and a five on that one. So 10 plus four is 14, 19, 23. And then, um, so double it because I'm only shooting half the round, so that's 46. And then, normally this is a 20 round target. Uh, this is an, actually an old school target when you actually shot uh, 20 rounds. And um, so you actually double the 46 again, so that's uh, uh, 92. And so let's go get our total and see if we scored riflemen today in the freezing cold. Okay, so for the end of the day, we got our rifle zeroed with the Weaver scope. We shot our little uh, kind of abbreviated uh, Project Appleseed AQT. Ended up with a, a 42 on the offhand, 44 on the squatting. And I should have got my 1.2 Joe Biden bonus, but I didn't multiply that in. Uh, stage 3 got a 48 and stage 4 got a 92 for a total of 226. So it did shoot the rifleman score with this optic and not sure I think that's one of the better scores I've gotten on this so um, and that's you know shooting without a sling I didn't use a shooter's aid or anything just shooting off the ground and all the all the field positions without any sling support so that's the advantage of the bullpup is you don't need that extra sling support as much as you do on a conventional rifle so I'm pretty happy. It's uh, the optic seems to be pretty good. I can't tell it's a little bit heavier out on the front than uh, when I had that red dot. That's a little bit lighter, but I think uh, I think my scores uh, justify the optic. Uh, the three power optic definitely helps, and. Um, it's nice to be able to actually, especially on this, to be able to uh, see some of my hits so I can make corrections. And so anyway, I'm going to go, I've got a couple of targets, have some empty spaces, empty spots on them. So I'm going to take the 55 grain ammo and see if I can do my eight minute of angle uh, Kentucky windage or Kentucky hold and get some, get a few more rounds in today. This is Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Lots of links will be down in the description. Let's do a quick recap of minute of angle. What is a minute of angle? Well, let's think of me as this human protractor. And here's my, we'll call it my line of sight, the baseline of, of my protractor. And if I take this arm and extend it up, there's about, maybe about 45 degrees of angle between this hand and this hand. If I come down to there, that is about 15 degrees. And down into bears, maybe 10 degrees. And then like right in there is maybe one degree of angle. Now one degree of angle, if I extend that angle out to 100 yards covers about 60 inches. That's quite a bit of distance. Uh, it's pretty coarse for good marksmanship. So instead of doing one degree of angle, let's look at minutes of angle. There are 60 minutes in a degree. So one minute of angle, which is 1 60th of that one degree, at 100 yards will be about one inch. Now, the th thing to keep in mind is that that angle continues on into infinity. So if we extend it on past 100 yards, this angle, that one minute of angle at 100 yards is one inch. At 200 yards, it's gonna have spread on out. It's gonna be at about two inches. 300 yards, three inches. 400 yards, 4 inches, 500 yards, 5 inches, on out to, say, 1,000 yards, 10 inches. 
that's approximate. It's a little bit more than that, but for uh, this is close enough. Now, the reason, let's go look at our targets. Let's actually, let's come back from that 100 yards. So remember at 100 yards, one minute of angle will be about one inch. If we come back to 50 yards, that's half of the 100 yards, that will now be a half an inch. If we come back to 25 yards, it is now a quarter of an inch. So one minute of angle at 100 yards is one inch, 200 yards, two inch, 300 yards, three inch. Now if it's two minutes of angle at two minutes of angle at 100 yards is going to be two inches. Two minutes of angle at 200 yards will be four inches. Two minutes of angle at 300 yards will be six inches and so on. If we come back to 20 or 50 yards, two minutes of angle will be one inch. If we come back to 25 yards, two minutes of angle will be one half of an inch. So let's look at our targets. Let's, uh, we're going down range and we, uh, our point of impact, let's say, is two inches low at, and we're shooting, we're zeroing at 25 yards. And our point of impact is two inches low from where we, our line of sight was. And we want that point of impact to be the same at 25 yards for our 25, our battle site zero. So we go down range, we'll look at the target, it's two inches low. Okay, so now I'm at 25 yards. Two inches low is how many minutes of angle? Remember at 25 yards, every quarter of an inch is one minute of angle. So two inches, that means two inches is eight minute of angle. Now what do we do with that information? We take that information at eight minute of angle, we'll write it down, and we go back to our optic. And we pull the cover off of our optic here, off our, to adjust the elevation. And we look on the optic and we see how many clicks on that optic per minute of angle. Now, if you're running, say, a red dot, it could be that each click is one minute of angle. So in this case, we found that our, remember our point of impact was eight inch, or two inches low. That's eight, eight minutes of angle at 25 yards. And so if it's, our optic is a red dot and it's one click per minute of angle, that's gonna be eight clicks up and we should be right on. Now, if our optic is one half minute of angle per click, now we've got that eight minute of angle, so, and each click on the optic is a half a minute. In order to get eight minute of angle, we're gonna have to do 16 clicks up to raise it two inches at 25 yards. Now, like many optics, they're one quarter of a minute of angle per click. So to get that two inches, that is that eight minute of angle, to raise that point of impact, eight minute of angle up at 25 yards, to do that with the uh, quarter minute of angle, quarter minute per click on the optic, we're gonna have to raise that 32 clicks. Let's say at 300 yards, we are, we are checking our zero at 300 yards. And we find that our point of impact is three inches low at 300 yards. I'm using three inches because it's easier to calculate. <laughs> so at 300 yards, one minute of angle is actually three inches. And we are three inches low, so that means we are one minute of angle low. Now if we'd been six inches low, that means we would have been two minute of angle low. So let's say we were three, three inches low, therefore one minute of angle low. So we bring that, we write that down, we're three inches low, which at 300 yards means it's one minute of angle low. We come back to our optic. If our optic is one quarter click per minute of angle, remember it's only 
one minute of low angle low at 300 yards we only need to raise four clicks to get one minute of angle up and the same applies for windage it's the same same exact thing exact theme if you're uh, four inches to the right at uh, say 200 yards that's uh, that's two minute of angle to the right so we we need to move left two minute of angle we come back to our optic and if it's one quarter click per minute of angle that means eight clicks left on our optic if you want to learn a little bit more about this we, I have an, uh, a series inches minutes and clicks in our Appleseed prep series I'll include a link down in the description